Gamers, what's good? So today we're going to be talking about the battling boxers. But if you're a regular viewer here at Master Duel Central, you might be noticing something a little different. I'm so excited about this. Actually, I should have went to bed, but I just couldn't. I just I needed to make a video. I was just too excited because I finally got my new camera. Like I said, you know, if my subathon got to day three, we would get a new mirrorless camera and we got to day four actually. So massive thank you to everyone that supported on the subathon or even just watched or participated. I really appreciate it. If you guys can't see the difference, give me a second, okay? I'm gonna give you a comparison shot right now. So this is the new camera and this is the old camera. It's zoomed in right now. Yeah, of course my light is, uh, is kind of messing it up because I did get a new light, um, but dude, Dude. <laughs> anyway, I'm super excited. I don't I don't want to meander about this stuff, but you know, we're almost at 20,000 subscribers. I, I feel incredibly grateful right now just looking at, at the new camera, you know, the the new light. Uh, I even got a new microphone, which hopefully is a, is improving the sound. I don't know if that's actually going to make a huge difference, but we did we did, you know, go all the way to improve the quality of the content after all the support people showed on the subathon. I just really appreciate all the support you guys have shown throughout the last two years. It's been a dream of mine to do YouTube. Like all of high school, I wanted to do YouTube. And uh, it's crazy that my video, my first video with the new camera is a deck that I've been excited for for a long time. It's uh, Battle in Boxers. Uh, I'm a massive fan of Hajime no Ippo. So look, man, let's not dilly dally. Let's just get right into it. Let's go take a look at the deck list first so I can give you a quick introduction to the deck. So first thing I want to show you is results just to show you that I'm not full of it. You know, I played way more than 20 games with this deck to get some decent testing for it and get a decent idea of it. Currently, we are in Diamond 3. The season just started, so you know, uh, I'm pretty sure I could get to Master with this deck and potentially with some hard work and dedication like Epo, I could even make it to Master 1. So look, man. It's not perfect, but look at this win rate. You know, win, lose, four wins in a row, lose, six wins in a row with the boxers. And then, you know, it's a bit of a lose, win, lose, win, 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 lose, win. You know, it's like, it's a, the give and take of Master Duel. I'm not saying this deck is somehow the best deck in the game or anything like that. But this build of Battle and Boxers is by far the best. And I got to give massive props and shout outs to Mazinger in my Discord for spending a ton of time trying different builds and really doing his best to cook a version of Battle and Boxers that would be playable in the current format. And he really knocked it out of the park with this one. So as you can see here, we're playing a massive amount of Battle and Boxers and just a, a tiny, a tiny little bit of Kashira Monsters, you know, just a small pool of Kashira Monsters. Uh, yeah, so Battle in Boxers with Cash Tira is actually super genius, and I'm so happy that Moss thought of this because they actually have a lot of synergy. For one, uh, Battle in Boxers do not care whatsoever about being locked into XCs, so you can easily go for Cash Theosis, uh, you can go for the, uh, Rise, the Rice Heart Special Summon. Uh, Rice Heart is also a level 4 and a Fire Warrior, so he is searchable by Dempsey, and he's also a, a monster you can use to make Dempsey if you need to, so there's a lot of little synergies here and there. Also, so one really cool thing about the boxers is that is that I'll actually provide your deck with a negate. Now, I removed one uh, counter trap that you could put in the deck if you wanted to. Uh, there's this trap called a uh, flamvel counter. Um, and I'm not running it because I bricked on it a couple of times. It's a bit more situational, but it is searchable in your main combo if you decide to run it. Yeah, this is probably not the best version of cash, but it's not like it has nothing to offer cash. I actually think boxers do offer cash some cool things. Not to mention, we're also running a bunch of staples. I mean, I've won so many games off of just evenly matched, off of dimensional shifter, which is just insane right now. And you know, we got the, ba the, the typical hand traps. We got the full package here. This is a really solid deck, and I'm very, very happy to be able to showcase boxers on the channel. I was really worried when I first tried them because this deck is atrocious, pure. It's atrocious. It is so bad. But Maz really figured something out, and I do feel like I can at least go into ladder with confidence that I could win this game, even against Snake Eyes, even against other meta decks. I actually do have a solid chance of winning, as you guys saw from my results in the, in the uh, ladder. So, without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to check out some replays, then we're going to do some live gameplay, and then we're going to go to solo mode so I can show you the full combo, after which I'm going to do the card by card. That's what we always do. So before we get into all of that, make sure to subscribe and let's get into it. So I think a solid replay to prove my worth would be going second against Snake Eyes. This is the last duel I had, and honestly, I was like, oh, this is going to be a really good showcase. I have to show it. So here, 
we have no hand traps going second into snake eyes let's see what we can do now to be fair i'll be honest uh, I think they played poorly. Uh, I wasn't even paying attention to the screen because I thought, oh, I'm done for, you know. <laughs> they started their combo. Well, at first I was like, oh, I might be okay. Then I saw a Snake Eyes card and I was like, oh, I'm I'm donezo. Uh, but th their combo didn't end up amounting to very much. So I don't know if they misplayed or if their deck is just poorly built. But either way, we can fast forward here. So they go Poplar Effect, grab the Divine Temple of the Snake Eyes. Then they go for the... Uh, for, for the Ash, go Flamberge, put Poplar in the back row and set a couple of cards. Okay, so I think what clearly happened here is that you were not supposed to search the field spell here with Poplar. I think this dude searched the field spell and then realized, wait, why did I do that? So probably a misclick more so than a misplay. I'm not sure. But either way, so, you know, what they passed on here is really nothing too crazy. Now, I don't think I played perfect here, but I do think I played really well uh, regardless. So let's just check out what I did. So... What we've got in hand here, we've got a upper cutter, we've got a rice heart, we well, rice heart, we've got Cashier or Unicorn, the field spell called by, and the trap, right? Not too bad. So we go for the pressured planet rate soth, and they go for ash. Here I'm like, okay, Flamberge is, is here. I think I'm gonna hold on to my called by. I don't really care about this because I already have Unicorn in hand. We're already gonna get to Fenrir anyway. And we even have Upper Cutter. And by the way, Upper Cutter plus Unicorn is full combo for this deck. Although this is not really the combo we're gonna be doing in this replay. So either way, they go for the Flamberge here, summoning out a Snake Eye Ash. And here I definitely misplayed. I don't know, I don't I don't actually know why I did this, but when they go for the Snake Eye Ash effect, I just figured, oh, what if I call by Ash and then next turn, if they get a next turn, you know. Uh, they won't be able to use Ash. I feel like this was super stupid. Like, I, I don't know why I even cared about Snake Eye Ash here. And I could have just, like, held it for Flamberge later. It's not really a big deal. By the end of the combo, you'll see why. But I do feel like I should have done something different about that. Either way, here when I summon Unicorn, they're going to special out the Poplar and search the uh, original Sin, which they should have searched last turn. And I'm going to banish, you know, the good old Promethean. They're going to go for Unicorn. And, uh, okay, I don't understand this. I had Zeus in my extra deck. I had... Baron in my extra deck and my man's decided to banish trident i could what a anyway uh that was interesting but either way so we, we grab theosis with the unicorn and we go cashier of theosis on unicorn special out the cashier of fenrir after which we go fenrir effect grab the cashier scareclaw and we're going to special out the cashier rice heart i'm going to leave it at level four for now and we're going to make ourselves a shangri era in attack position uh, reason I put it in attack position, I wasn't sure what these were. And I was like, okay, so if I get interrupted further while I'm doing what I want to do, I can at least go Shangri-Era, swing into Poplar, and, you know, um, make a Zeus and just wipe the board at that point. You know, worst case scenario. Uh, so here I'm going to go for Rise Heart, banish the Big Bang, of course, uh, banish the top three cards of my opponent's deck. Then we get to go Shangri-Era, lock a zone, and Big Bang is going to summon back my Fenrir that was stuck in defense position because of Theosis. And now I can put my Fenrir in attack position where it can actually just remove the Flamvel which, without putting it in the graveyard. At this point, I'm going to go for Kashtira uh, Scareclaw, and we're going to banish the Kashtira Theosis to add back the Big Bang to our hand, which is actually a really strong interruption. Then I'm going to Normal Summon the Upper Cutter, and I'm going to search Battling Boxer Sparrer. So very important here, I'm not going to summon the Sparrer yet, and the reason for that is because this card will stop you from going to Battle Phase. It says... If you do, you cannot conduct your battle phase for the rest of this turn. So basically, you never want to summon Sparrer on main phase one unless you're going first. So at this point, you know, we're just going to go straight to battle phase. Straight to battle phase, we're just going to clear everything. So Shangri-Era, swing into Poplar. Then they get their Poplar effect, put it in the back row. Don't really care about that. After which, we're going to go for Fenrir, swing into Unicorn. Fenrir, banish the Flamberge. Then we get our Shangri-Era effect. Don't really care about Shangri Era because I'm just going to make a Zeus with it later, honestly. Uh, now I can go for Rise Heart, swing into their Snake Eye Ash, and swing with Uppercutter, swing directly with Cash Tira. At this point, we're going to go into our Arise Heart. And after that, we're going to special out the uh, Battle in Boxer Spar since uh, it's basically a Black Wing. It specials itself while you control a Battle in Boxer. Now I want to show you a really neat interaction in this deck uh, between Battle in Boxers and the Arise Heart here. So on Summon, King Dempsey obviously will search our counter trap that has the word counter in it that's the, their whole gimmick basically um but he has another effect uh quick effect you can detach a material from this card and if you do your opponent cannot target oh no actually you can detach a material from any xyz you control and your opponent cannot con uh, target battling boxers for the rest of this turn so the thing that's really cool about this is that when he detaches 
it's going to attach the material to your arise heart so since he has two materials even if you make a one material arise heart by the start of your opponent's turn you've already used this twice and you're actually going to get a three material arise heart without having to like wait for it at all you know so you can kind of like force your arise heart into having three materials so here we go arise heart attach the theosis and uh we're gonna turn our shangri era into a zeus just to have that extra form of interruption i already knew what i was playing against i felt like the shangri era was not worth it at all uh for next turn uh i mean i guess i could have tried to lock more zones but i felt like just having another interruption after all the stuff they have to play through here is kind of crazy right we have the big bang uh, we have the arise heart banish we have the battle and boxer counter trap which is going to negate a monster effect so like we've got a lot going on here so i was feeling really confident i set all my cards and i just passed turn so my opponent draws, they go for Kashira Birth. At this point, I'm going to go for Battle and Boxer Dempsey, detaching a material. I could have done this in the draw phase, to be honest. But either way, it's just so that my Arise Heart will have three materials. That way, if they activate Kashira Birth, I can just banish it. Unfortunately, they go for Sinful Spoils of Subversion, but I guess I will just go Arise Heart at this point and banish the Kashira Birth in the back row. Still, we're in a pretty good position here. We still have a ton of interruption. We still have our Fenrir. Uh, we still have our Counter Trap. Uh, and we get to add back to our hand the Rice Heart as well, which is nice. They're going to go for original Sinful Spoils at this point, summoning out the Snake Eye Ash that I called by last turn, which is, uh, I guess, a misplay. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, and yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? So they go Poplar, put the Oak in the back row. I'm going to go for Fenrir, banish the Field Spell. At this point, they go Snake Ash, and I just thought to be funny, I'd just negate it because I knew that they had, like, nothing left. And I was just like, if you have something else, I'll just Zeus it, but I don't think you have anything. Uh, so I was just being a bit a little bit BM here, but still still I mean come on Battling boxers, bro. Come on, dude. You got you got to give it to him man. That was really solid, right? So anyway Pretty happy with that replay. We got a couple more. I think that was like a great replay. Uh, I'm going to check if I have one that's more of a bread and butter combo. I'm not sure if I do, but uh, if I don't, it's fine. We'll just do it in solo mode later. Okay, I found a replay that's not exactly a bread and butter combo. Well, not your main bread and butter combo, but this is definitely one of your most bread and butter combos. This is one of those combos that you're going to do that are going to win you a lot of games. And it's a really, really strong line. So I just wanted to show it to you guys. So basically, of course, I start by activating my dimensional shifter here because I drew it, you know, for opening hand. And yeah, that was the combo. So <laughs> I hope you guys like the combo. I, th I thought that was a really good combo. I, I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, uh, moving on. All right, so here we go. And uh, we're playing boxers against Kashira here, actually. So if you look at my hand, I obviously have like zero access to any Kashira plays. I have Uppercutter, Chief Second, Evenly, and Nibiru. So I'm like, okay, this isn't like a auto lose situation. It's just a play boxers and win situation so we're gonna go for the battle and boxer upper cutter add to our hand the battle and boxer spar at which case at which point sorry special the sparer and make ourselves a battle and boxer king dempsey baby and now king dempsey is gonna grab us our cross counter and we're gonna go for king dempsey detach here to make our dude untargetable uh there, I, I do want to point this out the reason i'm detaching sparer early here is because um we we can activate one upper cutter effect per turn and upper cutter does have an effect where if it's sent to the grave by card effect uh you can actually special summon a battle and boxer from your graveyard or set a counter trap from your grave so we won't be able to do that second one but we will be able to special our sparer in defense in case we need extra defenses honestly obviously my board is pretty frail here so i thought just an extra defender just in case wouldn't be a bad thing give you a little extra wall you know so here we go king dempsey detach as soon as possible to get our upper cutter and grab our sparer and now all our battle and boxers are untargetable which is nice into kashira fenrir of course and here they're going to go for fenrir fenrir search the rice heart then they're going to go for rice heart i'm actually going to negate rice heart right here uh main reason for that is because i'm just like okay what else would i negate right like they can't summon other big kashiras while they control fenrir if they summon Rice Heart, they can potentially extend their plays uh, if they have, like, a, you know, a, a birth or something. Um, now, to be fair, if they had birth, they could do it anyway. So, but I was just, just thinking, like, why would I even let Kashira Rice Heart hit the field? I think I'm better off just negating it. And I have this card right here that I didn't tell you about, Battle in Boxer Chief Second. If you control a Fire Warrior monster while you're getting attacked... You can special summon this card, negate the attack, and banish a card your opponent controls until the end phase. So that's what I'm basically relying on. Also, do want to point out, when you pop, uh, when you destroy a monster with your counter trap, you get to special summon another battle in boxer XCs from your extra deck and equip it with the counter trap. Is this card good or useful? No. 
It's not. <laughs> it's really not. Uh, it never gets summoned properly. It needs to detach two materials for its effect, so you're never getting its effect. If you don't have this card, or you want to save the UR dust, you can literally just put in, like, lead yoke, and it'll do the same job, and it's not a UR, you know? So I just had it, and it's a big body, you know? So sometimes that comes up. It can be hard to beat over, and then next turn you can use it to make a Zeus at best. It's not a great card. Um, so you don't need to keep it if you don't want to. Either way, our opponent is going to normal summon a Planet Pathfinder. Planet Pathfinder, fetch the field spell. At this point, I was feeling great because it's like, oh, okay, so what? You're going to grab like a Scareclaw Cash? Like, who gives a shit, right? So they grab a Scareclaw Cash here. They're going to go Scareclaw Cash, banish from the grave, and they're going to special their Scareclaw Clash. At this point, oh my god, I said that so bad. They're going to swing, and I'm going to go for Chief Second, negate their attack, banish the Fenrir. Scoop it up. Scoop it up. Was that premature of my opponent? Well, I don't know. I don't know what was in their hand. So depending on what they, what they had in hand, honestly, I'd say no. Because on my turn, I could have just swung with an Xyz and made Zeus and had like a four material Zeus and just have like full control over the game. So I don't even think that was premature. I think unless my opponent's hand had actual good cards in it, I just kind of destroyed them there with just the battling boxers, you know? So, hey, can't say they're that bad. All right, so let's see if we can get some live game. Ooh, won the coin flip. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. So, yeah, I mean, of course it's Cash Tira, and uh, people call it Brick Tira. It can brick. I really don't think we're going to brick, though. I mean, I haven't really bricked with this deck yet. This is pretty good. Prosperity is nice, too. Oh, uh, let's see. How do we want to go about this? I think I'm going to go Prosperity. I'm just going to go for three because my hand is not that bad. Worst case scenario. Like our hand is actually quite good, even if we don't get anything too crazy here. So I'll just I'll just go for the, for the three here. We can lose one King Dempsey. I'll lose the Baron and lose the second Shangri Era. Oh boy. I would have loved to see this card in opening hand. Um, I mean, Uppercutter is good here. Uppercutter is a really good card in this scenario. We already have max C. Uppercutter is definitely not bad. I mean, that's really good. This is the one, this is one of those scenarios where if you had both counter traps, you'd be doing really great. Um, oh boy. Oh shoot. Okay. All right. Um, sure. Well, don't got to worry about maxi. Um, but I also can't set up my counter trap. So what this is going to be, it's going to be unicorn followed by, um, let's go uppercutter right now. Let's special rice heart. We're going to keep chief second as like that like attack negate uh huh let's see and i think what i do is i'll just make a shangri era to summon fenrir on opponent's turn yeah i think that's the play here yeah i'll banish a birth for now so that we can maybe potentially grab it later this is this is scary so we're gonna use these two we're just gonna go for shangri era we'll have like maxi fenrir and uh the, that attack negate could come up like, it really could. It's not the best, but it could be worse. Let's go Shangri-Era here. Mm-hmm. And let's special Fenrir from our deck. Not too bad. Got Fenrir. We got Uppercutter. That's all we got. Oh. 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 Whoa, buddy. Okay, I'll let them summon something. This is terrifying, though. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Yeah. So get Waka out. Mm hmm. Okay. On summon of Waka, I'm gonna go Max C. And if they have Ash, we'll get to Fenrir. I think I'll Fenrir their. I, I could I could just straight up Fenrir their, their Benkei. Stop them from getting that search. Wouldn't even, wouldn't even be that bad. They're thinking about it. Oh my god. Oh, they weren't thinking at all. They just have to play into it. Okay. Let's see if they change their game plan to play around Max C here. Baguska is not bad. Baguska does slow me down quite a bit. We don't really have like a an anti Baguska card in our deck. Just trying to think. Okay, so what I could do that would be pretty funny. What I'm gonna do is like if they choose to stop negating our shit to, so that they can play with uh, their their super heavy samurais we're going to be able to Dweller. And Dweller will stop them from doing graveyard searches. So I think just having Dweller on there is going to be nice. Does this just only negate activated effects? Oh, it does. Hold on. That changes things a lot, actually. Now we just do this. Yeah, actually, I think I keep Fenrir on the field here. Let's just do this. Okay, this is actually massive in that case. 
Yeah, so we just put a rice heart onto the board. Suddenly, they have to deal with that. Uh, so far, that was two summons this turn. So I'm allowed a third one. I'm considering just making a dweller here. So if they somehow deal with the rise, they still won't be able to do graveyard searching. I think I'm going to do that. And uh, we also have the Ash Blossom. This is really good. Yeah, because they're not negated. They just can't activate. So so my Arise Heart does, does have that going for it. Okay. Yeah, we'll just pass turn here. We'll just pass turn. That's fine. Sure, feel free to banish all your super heavy Samurais. I'm super down for that. Super down. They will get to search with the Big Bang K, I suppose, which is annoying, but... Mm-hmm. Detach. All right, that's one Waka banished. You'll have to see it. That doesn't even activate? Okay, it, it does. Okay, so that is negated. All right, good. That would be crazy if it wasn't. <laughs> All right, so here he is. Battle phase. Yeah, so I mean, at this point, there's only one thing to do, really. I don't want them to make a Zeus or anything. So in the battle phase, we're just going to banish that, uh, that... Oh my god, I couldn't target it, but he didn't know. Do I even put this in the video? Does that even count? I was about to lose to Zeus. I mean, bro scooped. So I guess MDCW? Like, I'll take it. Screw it, bro. Screw it. All right, let's go do the solo mode uh, bread and butter combo. <laughs> All right, so I guess I just got lucky because literally on my first hand, I got the uh, the bread and butter combo. Basically, it's a two-card combo, right? It's Cashier Unicorn and Uppercutter. This is like your bread and butter uh, mixing the boxers with the cashier, this is what you do, right? So we're going to special out the unicorn here. At which point... No, we're not going to activate that. I'm going to turn this to auto. So we're going to go for cashier unicorn. And we're going to add to our hand the cashier theosis. So at this point, we can go for theosis. Targeting the unicorn. And we'll just ignore that I have rice heart in hand. Because normally, you don't necessarily have it, you know? So we'll do it as if it was a two-card combo. So you get the Fenrir. Fenrir effect... At this point, you would add the Rice Heart. Very nice. Very nice. And you can activate the effect of Rice Heart to special summon it. So you special summon the Rice Heart. And of course, you want to make yourself a Shangri-Era at this point. You don't want to use Rice Heart before Shangri-Era because you want to be able to make yourself a, a Rice Heart using only your Rice Heart here. So we're going to go for the Rice Heart and we're going to send to the Banish Pile our Kashira Big Bang. Big Bang will trigger in the Banish Pile after we resolve this, and we can go Big Bang, trigger, targeting the Shangri-Era, and we can, of course, go Shangri-Era, and, you know, I don't know, block a, block a Pendulum Zone, why don't you? That'll, that'll just auto-win you the game against Pendulum decks, right? So, here we go. Summon out the Fenrir. Yep. Love to see it. Special Fenrir. Then we can use our Rice Heart to make ourselves a nice Kashira a Rice Heart. There it is. That's the one. At this point, you would normal summon the upper cutter. And you can go for upper cutter effect. Search yourself a nice boxer sparer. And you're just going to special summon it. And uh, try to avoid the anima zones if possible. So, you know, uh, if you're going to summon it, summon it to this zone. Uh, let's go for our sparer here. King Dempsey. Dempsey hits the field. Dempsey roll. That's the man right there. And uh, we get to search on summon our counter trap. So we grab our battle and boxer cross counter, add it to the hand. At this point, you do want to detach a material. And notice how the battle and boxers play so well, even under a rice heart. It's so nice. Uh, and you're going to detach a material from your King Dempsey. You can detach the... Uh, it doesn't really matter, actually, uh, because they don't go to the grave. So you'll never get the effect of uppercutter anyway. So you grab the sparer. And uh, you can put it on there. Actually, I should have grabbed the Big Bang, but it's fine. We'll just grab it on our opponent's turn when we activate King Dempsey. At this point, you set the Counter Trap. Uh, you set the Called By. And, you know, you just pass turn. Clearly, we're playing pretty hard into Nibiru here. Uh, but if you're trying to do anything else than Arise Heart Pass and Kashira, you're playing into Nibiru anyway. So I don't really think that's a, that's a fair judgment, if I'll say. Uh, either way, we're going to detach from King Dempsey here, detaching the upper cutter, and this time I won't make that mistake again. We're going to equip the Big Bang so that we can detach it from a Rise Heart and trigger the Big Bang, 
detaching the material off Shangri-Ra and summoning Unicorn. This is the full setup. I don't think I need to keep playing against this bot. I think you guys get the idea. But yeah, I think the only thing left to do really is go do the card by card. All right, and here we are for the card by card. I'll try to elaborate specifically, especially on the boxer cards since those are the ones that are new and that people might not be as familiar with. And I'll kind of skip over the, the less essential stuff or the stuff that's like, kind of like already spoken for like maxi we have a three ash we have a three uh battle and boxer sparrow we're running at one if you're running pure boxers you probably run more copies of sparrow because it's your main extender but in a build like this you really don't need more than one copy it's really just your search target off of upper cutter and your main combo line really is upper cutter plus a cash tira even with fenrir sure you don't get the full combo but even just going like fenrir plus upper cutter is still really nice um if you like were to have a different boxer than upper cutter and fenrir you could special Fenrir, search a Rise Heart, special a Rise Heart, normal any of these guys, and still go into your King Dempsey, you know? So, like, that's something to keep in mind. You know, you can still have at least, like, Fenrir plus a Counter Trap, which is actually nothing to scoff at. Uh, two copies of a Rise Heart, uh, I mean, Rise Heart. This card is like really good in this deck actually like in this build it's just kind of glues everything together this is maybe the only cash tira build where sometimes you just really want to keep your rice heart level four just to use it for a rank four monster and yeah so i love rice heart in this deck obviously we're running three upper cutter because this is like the best battle and boxer card in my opinion battle and boxer chief second you you guys saw that a battle phase negate it's actually pretty useful sometimes to have access to so you know uh if you already have what you need to make your king dempsey when you're searching with upper cutter you can just search a chief second and that's just like an extra small form of interruption it's definitely not bad also you know if you normal summon chief second you can use his effect uh well it's not an activated effect but you get an extra normal summon of a battle in boxer which definitely does come up uh, we're running only one of takamura the champion takamura battle in boxer promoter if you guys haven't watched hajime no Ippo, please watch it it's the best anime ever but yes unfortunately even though this card should be the best battle in boxer card it's low-key like not great Okay, so yeah, it can special summon up to two battle and boxers with different names from your deck, which on paper is great. But the thing is, it locks you into battle and boxers, not after it's activated, but for the entire turn, which makes not even just this deck bad, but even makes like pure boxers bad because it, it just means like you don't get to do any non battle and boxer stuff out of your extra deck, which makes like your rank fours kind of like super limited. So I really don't like this card. And honestly, I'm considering just removing it outright. I think I'd probably be better off playing a second Chief Second than even playing the Promoter. He does have the effect of banishing himself from Grave to make all your battle and boxers level five. So there is a world, there is a possibility that you could make the number C79, but this card is not very good. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, not worth it honestly not worth it uh then we have obviously our two copies of dimensional shifter this is like one of your best combos in the deck uh our one fenrir triple unicorn obviously one ogre one copy of cashier scare claw got the nibiru on deck especially for the cross out mostly uh reinforcement of the army because i mean come on it's an extra copy of our boy right here a pot of prosperity i activated it for three earlier um you can definitely activate this card for six really easily like i'm running a zodiac package here and you know you have like two copies of most of your like important xc's so you can pretty easily activate it for six uh so i would have activated it for six if i didn't feel like my hand was already really solid but i was like you know we can maybe get a nice like you know get a call by or get a, a nice hand trap or something so i was like trying it but yeah, this card is definitely a must play in the deck. Two copies of Theosis, one copy of Durandal. I don't think this came up in the video, but Durandal, I mean, it's nice because your cashier is special summon themselves. So, you know, if you have Unicorn Durandal, that's also an extra copy of Upper Cutter since, uh, you know, you can just use Durandal to search a Fire Warrior, which all the battling boxers are. We have our one copy of Raid Soth, a one copy of Cash Tira Birth. Once the update comes into effect and we l get our new ban list, you're going to obviously remove one copy of Unicorn and replace it with one copy of Birth. It is going to make the deck a little bit worse not gonna lie two copies of called by one copy of cross out designator triple evenly i'm a huge evenly stand in this format i keep telling everyone you got to run three evenly it's winning me so many games it's just amazing right now one copy of imperm especially for the cross out one copy of big bang we've got our counter trap and this is where i should probably mention if you guys do want to run it flamvel counter is also another really good counter trap that you can run in this deck and you know uh you, the upper cutter is a 200 defense fire monster so you can banish the upper cutter from your graveyard and you get a spell and trap negate not a huge fan of this card for one it doesn't like you might not even be able to set it up under your rice heart and also you won't always have access to upper cutter like sometimes you'll make king dempsey without making it with upper cutter so i removed flamvel counter 
but it is something to consider. It is a counter with the word counter in the name. So you do get to search it with your King Dempsey if you wanted to. And of course, we're running the cashier preparations. I think this card is really good. In the extra, I'm running a copy of Baron because we have three Ash and sometimes normal Ash with uh, like any cashier monster can come up and be really good. Uh, we have one copy of Abyss Dweller. Uh, we have a Zodiac package here. You can also run the Spring Inns package, which is like Spring Inns, Merrymaker, and uh, Sargus. So yeah, gigantic champion Sargus, by the way. This is very fitting for a boxer deck, as well as your Merrymaker. And you know, you can go like Merrymaker, Sargus, Swing with Sargus, make Zeus. So that's another way to make Zeus in the deck. I personally prefer the Zodiac engine for this deck, uh, mostly because you get the removal of Dryden a bit more easily. Uh, Sargus is also removal, but it removes when other Xyz monsters detach materials. So I'm not a huge fan of that because his removal requires you already having set up. And Sargus does have the advantage of being able to send to the grave or bounce. And also it can target face down cards, whereas Dryden can only target face ups. So, you know, there are some advantages to playing that engine over this one, but I prefer the Zeus. Uh, two copies of King Dempsey because this is your guy. This is your main dude. This is Epo in the flesh. Literally Epo. Let me show. Let me put a picture on screen here. Literally Epo. Okay. Oh my God. Watch the anime. It's so good. It's so good. Anyway, uh, one copy of uh, number C79 Battle in Boxer General Kaiser. Yeah. If you guys heard me earlier, this card is not a must play and it's not very good. And you're even if you summon it properly by having three level four monsters on the field that are battle in boxer names and going for promoter effect in the grave to make this guy, he's still worse than just making a King Dempsey and searching your counter trap. So if you don't have this card or if you want to just get back some UR dust, you can easily run the the lead yoke, lead yoke does the job just fine. This is going to be your target that you summon from the extra deck with the cross counter. And I mean, is it amazing? No, but neither is this card and this card is UR, whereas this one is SR. So, you know, this one, the only reason I'd rather run this one is because it's a bigger body, like, like I said earlier. Uh, so yeah, lead yoke, totally valid option. Uh, we have the big eye. I think big eye is just kind of a no brainer. It's one of those cards that doesn't come up except when you remove it. So I'm just going to keep it. Uh, one copy of Dark Armed, the Dragon of Annihilation. This card is just a must play in cash decks. Two copies of Shangri-Ra, two copies of Arise Heart. Got to play around Unicorn and the one of Zeus. So that's the deck profile, guys. Really, really happy with this deck. Massive shout out yet again to my boy, Mazinger. Super happy with this deck list, man. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, I don't have the zoom button right now. That's it for me. All right. Peace.